What's going on, guys? James Camacho here. This is Kicking It With Camacho. It's a rainy day in New York City, a rainy tequila Tuesday. And uh, as you know, on a rainy day, on a gray day, you want to be lazy. You want to be with your loved ones. And apparently, the rain day has caught up with my little Kaisa. And Kaisa is uh, going to be in the background today, it looks like. I don't know for how long. He's giving me a dirty look. That's what cats do. You, you acknowledge them. You talk to them. And, like, cats never really look at you like, like, hey, how's it going? It's always like, you know, it's just that angry puss face, you know? But, yeah, I feel bad doing the podcast because I was literally sitting here uh, preparing the questions for today because it's Tequila Tuesday. We answer questions. And, um, uh... Kai, uh, Bulba, who uh, I started the podcast with, and he kind of went off camera. He was like just laying on my lap sleeping, and I had to be like, "All right, buddy, get get the fuck up, let's go." I don't know how I'm gonna do it with in the future, like uh, like I don't know how. Like, I, dude, I'm such a sucker. Like, whenever I wake up in the morning, these cats they come up to me and they 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 sit like right here, like they like get right here on my chest, both of them, and they start purring and shit, right? And then I pet them, and it's like a huge, huge love orgy, right? And I just, I can't, I what is it called? Someone said it to me yesterday. I can't move. Like, I have to just take it. I have to sit there, and uh, what is it? Um, cat something. Cat, frozen cat. What's a, God, let me try to find the terminology they used. It was such a funny, it was such a good term. Uh, what are some synonyms for frozen? Uh, deep freeze, quick freeze, preserve, cat serves. I forget what the, the, the word was. Um, but yeah, I was just like, I, when the cats are sitting on me, like, like my mindset's just like, all right, like I can't get up. I can't go to work. I can't get to my meeting. I can't do this. I can't do that. I gotta, I gotta wait for them to get off. I don't want to be that guy that pushes them off. You know, I want to train them. To sit on my chest. Dude, I'm so happy. These cats have turned out so perfectly. When I got them, my hope was that they would be social and, like, just sit on my chest whenever I wanted and, like, snuggles with me. And, like, yeah, dude. Like, oh, here we go. Here's Bulba. See? Look, he knows we're talking about him. See? Look. Here, he's coming. He's creeping. He's going to sit. Are you going to sit? Oh, no. What are you, you going to do? You're going to piss on my laptop? What are you going over there, buddy? So sorry for the listeners on audio. Oh, look. You look. He's... He just plopped. He just took a seat, and uh, looks like he's gonna be doing the podcast next to me. Yeah, these cats day by day are just getting more and more. Um, what do you call it? Uh, clingy, I guess. Now, clingy is not the right word. Just more loving. You know, the bubble go off camera. Are you off camera down there? I can't tell. All right, guys. So it's Tuesday. Uh, I'm sorry for my low energy. Yesterday I was off the walls. I was fucking. Uh, it was like I was on fucking uh, mushrooms or something, but. It's a rainy day. I had to wake up at 5 a.m. today to go to therapy um, as Bulba uh, is uh, typing things on the on the laptop over here. Bulba, can I get my laptop? Let me get my laptop, please. Thank you. Um, yeah, so whew, it's been a long day so far. Um, all right, here we go. We got a few questions. Uh, a lot of people... Uh, have asked questions. Re repeat offenders is what we'll call the people that have asked questions in the past. If you're shy or if you thought about it, like feel free to ask a question. If you don't want your name out there, if you want to do it privately, you can email me at James Camacho Comedy at gmail.com or oh, I you have so many options. Oh, you, how lucky are you guys? You have so many choices. Um, you could just DM me and um, that's private, right? I'll leave your name out of it if you DM me. If you uh, comment, you know, it's fair game. All right. Oh, the cats want to play. Hey, Bubba. They can't see you, Bubba. I think you're out of frame there, Bubba. All right. So as I fluff this cat and rub its belly, I will do the Q&A. Um, from YouTube, Erica Polly asked, how do you handle a quiet crowd at a show? Uh, what a great question. 
And it's a, it's a handling a quiet crowd at a show is something I experience very often. I mean, I would say so today's Tuesday, Tequila Tuesday. Yesterday, um, I did a show where the crowd was very quiet. I mean, it was just like a weird crowd, weird energy, uh, not much audible laughter from them. A lot of, a lot of giggles and smiles. And, um, it really like when when you can, for when the crowd's quiet, well, you really have to like up your energy. You know, it's weird. I was talking about this with another comic. It's like if a crowd sucks and they're quiet, you have to like triple your energy. You have to come up with big energy, right? And act like you're having the good time and you're having the best time uh, of your life. Like you being there doesn't suck, even though it does kind of suck because they're quiet, right? But then also when the crowd's good, you also have to come in with fucking hot energy, you know? So it's like as a comedian, it's always imperative. We do the show with energy and uh, the, no matter what the crowd is uh, like. And, you know, yesterday I was really excited about some new material I wrote and I really wanted to try it. I had a lot of faith in it. I thought it was very funny stuff I had come up with. So I came on stage, even though the crowd was quiet, even though the other comedians Every comedian going on before me was like, this sucks. This is brutal. I'll go kill myself after this. Like, uh, you know, you guys hate me. And I went up there with just a lot of like um, positive energy. Like, you know, I wasn't like lying to them. I wasn't like you guys are the best crowd ever. But like I came in there like I'm going to work on I want to work on my things. I'm going to say my things. And I did it and I had a good time. So I think the best way to handle a quiet crowd at a show is just you, you say, fuck their energy. I'm going to come out with positive energy, you know, and that's usually like a good way to go about things in real life. Like if you're like, um, I don't know, like you ever been, you've ever been in like a, I don't know, like a, a waiting room for something and it's depressing. Everyone's got low energy. Everyone's quiet. Everyone's awkward. And then one person goes in there and like lights up the room. Like it can literally change the dynamic of the entire room, you know? But, uh, yeah. So I would just say positive, double down on energy and, uh, you know, don't take it personally. Like, when, like sometimes people, if the crowd's already quiet, that means they've been quiet for everyone. It's not because they hate you um, or, you know, it's different if the crowd's good and then you go up there, then they're quiet. Then it's a little personal. But, like, if a crowd's quiet, sometimes uh, they, could, they, they could be seated weird. It could just be, like, an a awkward show, awkward group energy. Maybe someone before you went up and didn't do well. It's never really personal. And I think you need to just, like, know that, be aware, and just come in with your own positive energy, you know? So, yeah. And it's, like I said, something I deal with a lot, especially during the week when I'm doing um, small showcases for not-so-big crowds. Got to deal with the silence. Silence is violence. Silence definitely is violence to a comedian, to their fucking uh, fragile ego. All right, so uh, we move on to Facebook questions. Patricio Rios. Patricio Rios. Sounds like a fucking a drug dealer. I love it. They ask, what do you think about them adding stand-up to the Golden Globes? Also, what do you think about Ricky Gervais winning? Okay, two things. Um, I think, I don't think they added stand-up to the Golden Globes. I think, if you're referring to Joe Coy, his monologue, they've always done that where they have like a comedian host the show, they crack a couple jokes in their monologue, get the crowd warmed up, and then they go into the presentation. So that's always been a thing. They haven't added... Stand I mean, I guess it is kind of stand-up, but it's a weird... It's more of emceeing, you know? So I think that's always been there. Or uh, th th is there something I missed? Did someone actually do a stand-up set? I I'm, th I'm assuming you're talking about Joe Coy. And Ricky Gervais winning. What did Ricky Gervais win? I, I, I did not hear about this. Let's see. Ricky Gervais... Oh, Ricky Gervais, number one stand-up special. Is that what it is? Oh! So Ricky Gervais wins Golden Globe's first stand-up award. Doesn't show up. Is that that's that's what I see it from Entertainment Weekly? Okay. 
Oh, I did not know this, Patricio. Thank you so much for letting me know. Let's see here. It says, Ricky Gervais made history at the 2024 Golden Globes when he won the ceremony's first ever award for best performance in stand-up comedy on television, but he wasn't even there to accept the honor. Sunday's Globes marks the first time stand-up comedians have been honored at the award show. The newly created category recognizes outstanding work from a comic in a traditional stand-up format and comedy specials that aired on broadcast, basic and premium cable, streaming, and pay-per-view were considered. So no YouTube specials, so mine won't ever be on there. Um, Gervais won his Netflix special, beating fellow nominees Trevor Noah, Chris Rock, Amy Schumer, Sarah Silverman, Wanda Sykes. Um, and then Gervais wins, but he wasn't even there. Hmm. And then apparently he did some, um, he did a uh, a monologue where he fucking ripped everyone apart, and he everyone apparently loved it. I haven't seen it. I should give it a watch, but um, <laughs> I did not know this. Thank you for letting me know, Patricio. How do I feel about them adding stand up? I guess it's a good thing. You know, it's they've kind of finally considered stand up comedy as an art form not to the liken but maybe like in the same realm as film tv and stuff right it acknowledges comedians as artists which is good but just just going off the nominees here this is just gonna seem like just what the golden globes are and these award ceremonies are they're just fucking um celebrity famous people uh circle jerks you know like trevor noah i i the only uh, special I saw here was a Chris Rock special. And of all the comics on here that are like, I guess, comics like that I actually respect, I would say probably Rock, Wanda Sykes, and Silverman. I get, But it's like Amy Schumer. Here, I, here's what I'll say. I have not seen any of these stand-up specials besides Chris Rock's, which I thought was great. Um, so I can't say these are bad nominees, but all I hear is that Amy Schumer's special was was dog shit. Uh, Trevor Noah, I heard. I don't know. I, you know what? I would, I'll take that back, Amy, because I haven't seen it. But these are just like the biggest. These are just like, okay, what stand-up comedians put out a special and we're just going to pick out uh, the most famous, you know? So yeah, I can't. I, I guess it's a good thing. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. Who wait? What? I guess Bill Burr wasn't nominated, but was Bill Burr twenty twenty four? What was Bill Burr's last special? Bill Burr. Hard Rocks. Hard. Uh. At Hard Rock, what is it? His last special. At Red Rocks, twenty twenty two. Wow, that was two years ago. Jesus Christ. And then Chappelle. I think Chappelle didn't have a special last year. I think it was like two years ago. Anyway, so the whole point is, um, I think it's a good thing, right? Um, finally acknowledging stand-up special as an art form and you know putting in that awards category. It's all in all a good thing. And thanks for bringing that to my attention. All I saw, I the, the only thing I saw from the Golden Globes was um, Joe Coy's monologue that I went to watch football. And then I saw on Twitter that a lot of comedians were kind of poo-pooing Amy Schumer. I mean... Uh, not comedian. Uh, a lot of people on Twitter just don't like Amy Schumer, and I haven't seen her stand-up special. Um, but it does seem like Amy is one of those people that the public generally doesn't like, but she's so in with Hollywood that she's always gonna get these like uh, um, what do you call it? You know, nominations, and um, you know that's just the business, right? Am I too low energy? I feel like a fucking, I feel like I'm on Ritalin right now. I'm not. I'm just, I woke up at 5 a.m. All right, I'm too into it. Maybe it's because the, these, just look at these cats. You guys can't see Bulbo right here, but then look, look at these cats. Oh, they're so cute. Hi. Okay. All right. Um. JC Rowell. I hope I'm saying that right. I know I was saying Jackie, but it's JC Rowell. Rowell. Um, she's got, a few questions, I believe. She's the best. She has some of the best. She actually thinks about the questions, which I really appreciate. 
She's got a lot of range as a question, as an interviewer. You should be an interviewer. <laughs> you should be the person where some some person is going for their job interview, all nervous, right? They practice in front of their mirror with their manila envelopes, and then you're the person they they're, that's asking the questions, you know? Um, JC asked, do you like mafia movies or which genre of movie are your favorite if you like to watch movies? Um, and then she also asked, okay, so... Do I like Mafia? I do. I do. Um, I've been meaning to wa- rewatch like Goodfellas and Casino and uh, Godfather. Those are and uh, those are great movies. What's the other one with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio? That's fucking great. Uh, ooh, the one, the one, the Boston one. Five, no, not Five Towns. Uh, that's not even a movie. I'm thinking about the towns. What's the fucking movie? The Departed. That's a great movie. I love those movies, man. Uh, American Gangster. With Denzel, that's a really, really good movie. Yeah, I love all those. Uh, uh, I, I guess uh, that one's not the Mafia. Um, Denzel, that's more. Um, yeah, it's something different. Uh, it's Black. That's Harlem. That's Harlem, baby. Anyways, um, yeah, I've been meaning to rewatch them. It's been a while since I've seen them all. It's getting to the point where I don't remember a lot of the shit that's happened, but. I gotta rewatch Casino. I gotta rewatch uh, Godfather. Casino. Uh, what's the other one I'm missing? Let me Google. What's the best mafia movies? Um, best mafia movies of all time. Godfather is a Bronx Tale. That's another one I want to see again. A Bronx Tale. That's where like the dude he starts dating the black girl, right? Right, guys. I'm talking to the cats. Um, I gotta see that again. Casino. Gotta see again. Donnie Brasco, I have New Jack. Oh my God! You know what? I should. I always say this, but I really need to sit down and re and watch some of these old movies, which uh, classic movies, man. Oh, Scarface is another one. Oh, so good. And um, Reservoir Dogs. That's not really. Is that a mafia movie? I guess that kind of is. But anyways, so um, this kind of leads to your next question, JC. It's like. Do I watch movies? I, I I love watching movies. I just don't really do it. And man, you're making me a little bit depressed. It's not you this is a great question, but it's kind of making me reflect on myself. It's like I'm such like a workaholic psychopath. Like I literally I wake up and I work all day. I never I don't stop thinking about working. I worry about like, you know, how I'm going to eat, how I'm going to support myself with this fucking dumb career choice I picked. Not dumb, you know what I mean. Just, 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 just crazy. Um, uh, what do you call it? Inconsistent uh, career I've chosen, and I don't take enough time to like unplug. Like I usually do it on Sundays, where I watch football pretty much all day. But you know, football is almost over, and I think when football ends, I think Sunday, what I'll do is I'll make it a movie day where I'll catch up on a few movies that, you know, like Casino I haven't seen in a while, A Bronx Tale. The last movie I saw. Um, this is really sad, but the last movie I sat down and enjoyed and watched, there was two. I, this is like post, like immediately post breakup. I watched, uh, Swingers, which is a fucking great movie if you're going through a breakup, man. There's no, there's no perfect movie to watch than Swingers after a breakup. And I also watched that movie, uh, The Breakup with Vince Vaughn and Jennifer Aniston, which is, uh, it's an okay movie. It's silly and it's, you know, it was just to numb the fucking breakup pain, but, um, if I were to choose a genre of movie, honestly, it depends on my mood. Obviously, I was going through the breakup. I wanted to watch some breakup stuff and comedy. But I normally like uh, action, adventure, like thriller type of things, you know? Because, uh, you know, especially... I don't like watching comedies too much, especially because the comedies now are so bad. Like, they aren't edgy at all. They're very safe. So I like watching action, adventure um, stuff. Get the blood going, you know. Um, yeah. Keep me in check, guys. Every Sunday um, on my day off, I'm not going to, well, after football season, I'm, we're, we're going to start rewatching movies. And send me some movie suggestions. Comment some movie suggestions. JC, let me know what your favorite mafia movie is. I'll take a look. Um, or I'll, I'll rewatch it. And then she also added on another note will you accept any randomly photoshopped images similar to the one you posted in these comment sections? Absolutely. If you have. If you're willing to go uh, take time out of your day to like I mean, do those Photoshop face swap things, please send them. 
Go crazy with your ideas. Send them to me. Email them to me, jamescamachocomedy.com at gmail.com. jamescamachocomedy at gmail.com. And I will, uh, I'll post them and uh, we'll have fun with them. And I could definitely use them too because I'm going to be announcing some new tour dates. And, uh, you know, when you announce tour dates, you got to make a wacky, fun flyer, you know, do a little promo. So, yeah, please send them, JC. That would be great. I really would appreciate that. Um, Norman, uh, who loves to message me on every uh, platform, not every, but he, he, Norman will like message me on Facebook. Then he'll message me on Instagram. Like <laughs> the same conversation. It's, a, it's just like, it's like he's like starting a thread between with both uh, platforms, right? He'll, he'll be like, hey, how you doing? Loved your last video. And then he'll go over to Instagram and be like, you looked good in that shirt. You know, your mom's hilarious. The next thing you know, it's Facebook. It's just like, uh, you know, uh, I, let me give you a suggestion. I yeah, hope you have a fun. He, and he, oh, every com- everything is so positive, but he always has to throw in like, uh, you look good today. You know, it's always like, uh, oh, your episode was great. <laughs> that shirt really fit well. Episode was fantastic today. Maybe your mom will, will tell you to wear a Speedo. Episode was hilarious. You looked really hot. It's always just like a nice compliment. It's like a double compliment, which more people should do. You know, I wish more women would do that. You know, women never compliment guys aesthetically. You know, they're never like, oh, that was, I don't know. People are weird. I'm the one guy that will compliment people. Not creepily, but like guys or girls. Like if I see a guy's looking good, I'm like, hey, man, you look great today. You know, or if a girl's looking great, I'm like, hi. I love your dress, you know? People don't do that, though, because I'll get dressed up and people don't say shit to me, you know? James? Hi. That's it. That's all I get. Oh, you again. <laughs> all right, so I think Norman's got a couple of questions. Um, how are we doing on time? 21? Oh, these cats are so cute. Um, what's up, buddy? Um, Norman asked, what did you want to do with your degree in English? Okay. Um, honestly, the only reason I started doing English as a major was because I was trying to um, transition into doing what I'm doing now, which is like show business. When I was in college, um, I had no idea really what I wanted to um, do, what I wanted to major in career-wise. But I, 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 I always, deep down, like I was like a, I was like a in the closet. Um, theater kid actor kid uh what's that word for um people that are in show like actors ah what's the fucking word um there's a word for let me see if i can google it um what do you call someone in the arts let me ask siri siri what do you call someone that's in the arts Let's see. These There's a word for it. Oh, I can't I can't remember the word for it. Um uh, anyway, so I always wanted to be a creative. How about that? That's what I wanted to be. I always wanted to be a creative. And um yeah, when I was in um middle school, high school, I always took like like I always had that interest in being an actor and being a writer. I would always, like, if I had an elective, I would take creative writing. Um, I always, like, drew my own comic books, wrote my own short stories. But I never acted on it because I didn't grow up in an environment where, like, the things I wanted to do were encouraged. My mom wanted me to just be straight A's. She wanted me to play, like, you know, the piano, go to, like, um, SAT prep classes. Anything I had, like, real interest in, like, playing baseball, movies, that, that like, these, these are all things that were, like, not possible ways to like make money which she's, she's kind of right it's <laughs> she's not wrong but um as i uh as i got older i don't know i just it was like you know everyone i knew was like doing this like supply chain management major economics major just doing these majors to be you know get like re- you know real jobs these safe routes and i just knew i i had no desire for that so while I was in college, I switched all like I, I was kind of going on that track to be an economics major. And I remember I was flunking because I just literally I didn't understand it. 
and I also like didn't want to learn how to understand it. Like I was pretty miserable, and I just I don't remember when the epiphany was exactly, but I remember my mom asking me like, "What is your major?" and I didn't have an answer for her, and I just remember like failing a macroeconomics thing. And I remember just like the struggle I was having, like trying to study the shit I didn't give a fuck about. And then I just reached deep down inside. I was like, what is it I want to do? Maybe my mom even might have said, like, what do you want to do? And I just like had a <laughs> and she probably was what she was probably hoping I would say I would she I would ask myself that and like be like, I want to get a good job and get a good uh, a safe income and blah, 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 blah benefits. But instead, I was like, what do I want to do? Like, I really want to be a writer and an actor. And then. I just dropped all my courses because I was failing anyways. And then I picked up all these creative writing courses. And then that's when I switched my major to English because it just aligned with all the classes I wanted to take, like creative writing, screenwriting, short story, literature. And then I slowly also uh, picked up a minor in theater. I started doing acting courses, Meisner, um, uh, theater decor stage decoration and that I remember when I switched all those courses that was the first time I was actually genuinely interested in the stuff I was studying and my grades went fucking way up I mean I don't know if my I don't know if it meant anything to my mom but like I was going from like fucking F's and D's and C's maybe to like A like straight A's but I guess like an F like I guess a C or a D in uh calculus is just as hard as getting an A in a, in a liberal arts class. You know, I, I think a lot of people would argue that, but yeah, that's, so my, my, what did I want to do? My, my English degree, it was just a way for me to like start dipping my toes in the creative side of Jem Camacho. And then Norman has a question, another question. This will be the last one. Um, he asked, when your mom made you do math problems as a child, or are they just off your dad's exam papers? <laughs> ah, that's great. No, um, my dad was a college professor. So, um, you know, when I was growing up, my mom was really strict with me about studying. It was really like middle school and like early high school. So, no, she, you know what she did? She actually went out and got all these like SAT prep books and like these study study books from like fucking God knows where. Maybe Barnes and Noble. She got me all these things and she made me do like she would assign me to do problems from the from the book. I I had a I used to do a bit about this. Not on stage. It was one of the, my the, my TikTok selfie things. By the way, um if you've made it this far can you comment if you actually like those TikTok selfie things? Like a lot of those jokes, I would things I would I would just tell things that actually happened to me growing up, and then I would have a punchline at the end. I stopped doing them because I kind of they kind of got exhausting. I kind of ran out of ideas. But if you like them, I can start looking into doing more. Um, it's just weird because the way the algorithms are working now, I don't I don't want to go into the whole algorithm thing. But if you if you enjoyed those, I can kind of dig deep again and. Uh, it was literally, I would just remember things from my childhood, and then I would tell them to the camera, and the videos would go fucking pretty viral. Right, Kaisa? What do you want, a high five? Give me a high five. Nothing? What are you going, you're going to jump off? All right. It's abandoning ship. All right. So, yeah, no, my mom, uh, I remember when I was in, like, middle school, high school, whatever, she would make me get up early, like, an hour or two before the school bus came, and then on my desk, like, in my, so there was the desk, and right across the desk, maybe like whew, like three feet away was my bed. And there were math problems like on the desk, like a couple of books that she assigned. Like do chapter one and then the other thing, do chapter two and then do another problem here. And then every day I'd have to wake up an hour before school, the school bus came, finish the problems <laughs> and then go catch the bus. I used to have this fucking stupid joke I did as a selfie video where I was like, when I was growing up, my mom used to make me do math problems. She would make me wake up at 6 a.m. to do math problems before I went to catch the school bus. So, um, you know, people, that's a lot of math problems, right? And people would always be like, I got 99 problems in a bitch ain't one. And then I'd be like, I know, me too. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, no wonder why I'm a failed comedian. Um, <laughs> ooh, I'm so negative today. I don't, sorry, I... 
not only did I wake up early, but my therapy session was very, very, um, not somber, but it was very serious. You know, we got, we got, we got into a lot, a lot of deep into my psychology there. But anyway, so the math problems were from textbooks and shit. My mom got me Dude, my mom got me. I forget what it was called, but she got me these fucking, Oh, I hated them so much, dude. She got me this one. I think it was score or something. She got me this one, like, like, like phonics thing or something. I forget what it was called. Not hooked on phonics, but just some fucking thing. It was like a big file. They look like little, like little files. Like you put in a filing cabinet of math, pro of like just problems. And she would just like pull one out every day and give me one. And they were like color coded for some, some reason. And all I wanted to do was fucking shred those fucking like uh, little files, man. Oh, I fucking hated doing the problems, dude. You know, but it is interesting how, you know, she obviously did it because she wanted me. She was trying to set me up to be successful, which I appreciate. But it is fascinating how like the more you push people, you the more, when you force people to do stuff, you they, you just cause a lot of resentment. You know, that's why it's it's a, it's a tricky um. It's a tricky way to uh, raise someone. It's also a tricky way to go about your business. Like you really got to like try to get people on board with what you're doing, your philosophy is, as opposed to forcing them to do shit that you want. And the buy-in is way more important. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. Well, I don't, I'm not too smart, guys. Remember, I was an English major. Um, all right, guys. That is this week's Q&A. Um, Kaisa and Bulba. Say goodbye. I don't know if you can see them. They may be off camera right around here. Uh, Kaisa literally has fell, fallen asleep on top of my recorder, so I can't see uh, <laughs> how, how long the podcast has been. But I think we're about 30 minutes in. Um, guys, every Tuesday, Q&A. If you want to ask a question, whichever platform you found me on, whichever platform you consume this, just comment your question. I will answer them every Tuesday. If you want your question to be anonymous, email it to me at jamescamachocomedy.com. Why, why do I keep saying the website and not the email address? jamescamachocomedy at gmail.com for all questions. Will be answered Tuesday. That is the end of today's podcast. Um, it's and adios. I appreciate you guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow.